and we are live well, welcome back everyone uh, glad to have you back we've had an amazing reaction to the the first episode but welcome to episode two of the honor club podcast where we cover the wrestling events that have taken place over the last week going over the news and breaking down match by match the big tv shows of the week just to remind you who we are my name is rgx current wrestling fan and prediction aficionado proud member of the honor club faction in fpl and i'll remind you of our leader rate wrestle take the floor i'm right wrestle i have no more information i'm not going to throw out that i'm the king of fpl that was just me nervous and threw out a random thing but yeah i brought the honor club together and started adding members and becoming the best faction in league history, I think. But anyway, uh, take it over, Smooth. Yeah, so Smooth Rock in the FPL, but Frozzy to a lot of people that know me. Um, just as Rate said, really, brought together because of Anna Club. Recently got RGX added to us against his behest. But um, this is where we are, and we're enjoying life. Yeah, you guys wore me down eventually. <laughs> Ah, uh, the dream. So, last week, I forgot to do all the usual stuff that YouTubers are supposed to do. Please like, comment, subscribe. Uh, give us a little follow at honor underscore club on Twitter. Uh, and you can catch the show on Spotify uh, under Honor Club Wrestling. Uh, the link usually follows a few hours after the video goes live. So we'll quickly hit into the news. Not to disappoint anyone, I'll do the jingle again. Did 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 did, did it news. <laughs> so yeah, as well. Uh, the first kind of big story of the week, obviously, with Tony Khan's takeover of Honor Club, uh, head Booker Delirious has left ROH after eighteen years of running the brand. Obviously, Gabe Sapolsky was like the the main man in charge, but as far as match production and storylines, that was all delirious, so you have him to thank for all the kind of summer punk stuff, all the real classic moments of ROH. It's sad to see him take a step back, but obviously Tony Khan is a man who likes to be extremely hands-on, so we can only assume that it's going to be the case with ROH as well. Yeah, he's um, taking over all the booking into. Yeah, it seems to be the the, the plan. Uh, I saw a quote from him uh, saying he wants to put on the best show possible. He doesn't know any other way. Which, fair enough, I guess. But I still feel we should have someone who knows the product and worked with the roster or at least give an input instead of when he can come in and cold and Pretty much rebooking everything. Although he'll claim to know everything that's going on with them, he doesn't have that in depth relationship with the, the wrestlers, what they can do to play to their strengths and hide their weaknesses, etc. It, take, it takes a while to build that sort of relationship, and he hasn't had that time, I suppose. Yeah, not unless they're just playing it as purely matchmaker for cards. As opposed to like try to book shoots and stories, it might just be all one off specials we don't know yet. I don't even think Tony really Khan knows yet. They're gonna be like a theater thing, aren't they, for AEW? Is that what I've seen banded about in a few places? That that's yes. essentially what it's gonna be. Yeah, it's a theory I've heard, but as I say, there, nobody's come out and physically said it. And I think that would be quite disrespectful of if that was the case for anyone to come out and say it, like, formally. Because, uh, obviously, whilst we all know Honor Club wasn't on the same level exposure-wise as, like, your AEW and WWE, uh, e, like, it's still a very major brand, and to come out and dismiss it and say it's just going to be a feeder system, even if that was the case, you wouldn't outright say that. Oh, car probably would. <laughs> uh, we were bordering on gimmick infringement. 
<laughs> he's going to spread himself too thin as well. Like he books Dynamite, Rampage, Dark, Elevation, and now he's going to try and book a right Ring of Honor as well. Yeah, exactly. That's that's what I like. Yeah, stops with you absolutely. Like, could you imagine Vince personally trying to write? Like SmackDown, Raw, NXT, I goes in there and tears up scripts at the last minute. But he physically knows he wouldn't be able to put together all the shows by himself. That's why, as a team of people, I think eventually Tony Khan will, will realize that. Especially as we going to start getting towards the business end of the, the football season. I was going to say he's got he's got Fulham as well as the Jaguars to be involved with. It's just I don't know. There's not enough hours in the day for that guy apparently. Yeah. So who knows how that's going to turn out? Uh, and I made a joke last week about still no Cody Rhodes, but apparently a deal has been signed for a significant pay bump from what he was on last time. Uh, but it's all speculation at this point. WWE themselves haven't announced it, but why would you? We would save that kind of surprise for a Mania or Raw after Mania. Uh, I still think the, the plan is for Seth to continue losing his mind uh, and eventually uh, show up at the show to disrupt it, saying, I don't care who's back there, I want a match, and out comes Cody Rhodes at that point. I think that's the way it'll go, definitely. Either that or Cody will show up raw after Mania. But then what are you doing with Seth? Definitely got to be mad. Yeah. It's a, it's a strange one. I'm, I'm quite entertained by Rollins doing what he's doing at the minute, but it's still annoying that he's not got a match. Yeah. I know. Right. Fair enough. It's not even similar to when John Cena was calling out The Undertaker and there was no response because at least he was like calling out someone who who wasn't already booked or like was still with the company. Like, yeah. WWE have a, a hard and fast rule going going self book matches that they don't know for a fact is gonna happen. Seth Rollins himself, ironically, has had his knuckles wrapped for that quite a lot. Like calling out uh, people from other federations that he, that Vince knows that they they won't ever have a match. And he gets quite hot yeah. about it. One of the many Vince isms. Yeah, the all the crowd were giving it to Cody on Raw, weren't they? And he was just like Rollins. Even was like, "Oh, you know what rumors are like." Yeah. What was he so saying? he did sort of address it, but yeah. But... As I say, it is the, the thing that makes the most sense, especially since he's still not got a match, is if not Cody, who do you actually just yeah, him you, off for a, you, for a promo segment? You, you look at who hasn't got a match now, and you're trying to build a match of someone that's already there, and it's, yeah, it doesn't, you're not going to do it in a week. Yeah, anyone worth wrestling is already booked. Unless, Brom Breaker. <laughs> uh, I think he's right after me. It'd be a surprise. Yeah, it'd be a surprise, but I did. I, it has to be Cody. Like, it's one of them ones now that I think people will be more annoyed if it isn't Cody. It's like when at the Royal Rumble where people wanting Brian to come in at 30 and then Ray Mysterio pop down. Oh, That's what really? like it would be like. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> Nuclear. Horrible. Well, I felt so bad for him and he like, it was going to happen as well. Yeah, poor Ray, that was so, he didn't deserve that. Right. Aim then though, so it's fine. <laughs> right. Okay, so uh, for the gamers out there, uh, obviously WWE were coming up to their their six year break point where they could exit the contract for video games early with 2K. Uh, it's been formally announced by 2K Games earlier today that they will be seeing out the remainder of the nine-year agreement, so there'll be at least three more games, uh, which for us Supercard players also means at least three more seasons of Cat Daddy right, doing their best to squeeze money out of us as well, so that's great. 
do you guys play the the two K games at all? It's been years since I've played one. To be fair, I haven't bought it yet. It's on. The, I'm buying a physical copy so I can give you the code. I remember I've said that. To be fair, at this point, the cards will be out of date. They come with it. They'll because they release new tiers that often now. Right. Uh, okay. <laughs> Uh, it's crazy, like you know how you get the seasons in Fortnite and stuff where they have like new like battle pass and all the rest of it. Yeah. Imagine that the app like Supercard does it every three months. And the, oh uh, right. And this time they did it after six weeks. Wow. So people spent loads of money getting their Royal Rumble twenty one cards only for a, a new tier to be released like three weeks early. Wow. It's looked good this year as well. Yeah, it's a 2K game. Look, uh, the last 2K game I didn't bother with because I just kind of thought I loved buying wrestling games. But this one looks really good. Yeah, the only thing that stopped me getting is pretty much I'm PC only at the moment uh, until I get my, my Series X. And I can't get a physical copy for the the PC. They only get download codes, so I'm not bothered about it. Mm-hmm. Wait no, well, my, my PS5's at home and I met my girlfriend's, so I mean, it, and that's why I've not bothered. But at least we're going to get three more 2K games, so at the current pace, might only be one or two if they, if they keep leaving an 18 month window, as opposed to a one year window. It's shown that it's been good for the quality of the game. I, I was going to say, I've not seen any negatives about it. Not even in any of the servers or in or nothing like that. Not nothing. Yeah, like, there's no issues from lag from what I've seen. Obviously, there's a lot of the features that are there are a bit basic. Like the my GM is only singles matches, no mid card titles. And I don't really know enough about it to go into all the nitty gritty of it. But no. But what I have heard is. Miles better than 2K20 was. I don't think it took much improvement, to be fair. No, very true. So, uh, we've also got the booking odds for... Uh, booking odds, betting odds for WrestleMania. Uh, these were correct as of uh, Saturday afternoon. Uh, Especially for us, a lot of the like are predicting. Sometimes betting odds can steer us in the right direction. Uh, it can also give us an indication. So we could uh, class this as a bit of a spoiler, but obviously the bookers and uh, are the only ones that really know what's going on just now. Uh, betting companies are speculating just like the rest of us. Uh, so if you're sensitive around uh, spoilers, I'll add a timestamp but for the champion versus champion match between Brock Lesnar and Roman Reigns Roman Reigns is currently 1-3 to three favourite on to win that match which kind of makes sense he's the, the full timer or close to full time uh, Bianca Belair uh, is 2-11 to 11 on uh, to win the uh, women's championship Rousey is one to six on favourite against Charlotte Flair. Uh, the betting odds are currently with Logan Paul and Miz beating the Mysterios. I'm not sure about that one personally. No, me neither. They usually have the, the baby faces going over in that type of match, don't they? Yeah, not unless we're getting a Dominic turn, which I think it's too early for that. I don't think Dominic's ready. No. Uh, and what everyone's top lock will be, I'm sure Drew McIntyre is two to seventeen on against Harry uh, Happy Corbin. Which to put that in perspective, that's nearly like uh, it's nearly one in ten on. So like a ninety percent chance basically that it's, the winner is pretty be much true. A, a, a dead sir is what they would call it. Yeah. Uh, so I'm just having a look at some of the others that aren't listed on there on Skybet currently because they've got a few more listed. 
and they have currently nothing between AJ Styles and Edge. They're both around even money. Yeah, that went like a glider away. I can see AJ Styles getting the win, but giving them yeah. both towards the end of their careers. It, could go, it really could go either yeah. It uh, all depends if we're going to get much story coming out of it at the other end or whether this is just a one-off uh, yeah. exhibition, basically. Yeah. You've also got RK Bro going over in the triple threat tag match. That's yeah, they're 8-15, to 15, Street Profits 9-4, to 4, and Alpha Academy 11-2. to 2. So Do we think the Riddle turns happening right after Mania, then? Yeah. yeah, is it Riddle think, that's going to turn? Yeah, I think so. I really know if we'll be expecting Orton. That's why it'll be Riddle. You've heard it here first. That's my, that's my theory. I, I just always think that Orton always says that he prefers being a heel. Yeah, and there's no reason he can't spin off into being a heel after the feud's done. Yeah. Uh, but I think it'll be a good like, swerve and it's the version of the norm if it's Riddle turning on Morton. Yeah, true. It would be a bit left field, wouldn't it? See, you've heard it here first. If that happens, remember the moment you heard someone predict it. Because I don't think many <laughs> other people will be. No. No. And there's a couple more. The Usos are the favourites to go over Nakamura and Boogs. Yeah, easily. Um, Austin Theory is favourite to beat Pat McAfee. Nice that one, Eight to no thirteen less, theory. No less they're planning a bench running spot. Mm. Make him zero um, three as well. McAfee would never have. He's not won yet, has he? He lost the Colt. He yeah. lost the War Games match. I'm sure he did. Did they lose? Yeah. No. Now you're asking. I'm pretty sure they did. Yeah, I'm I'm actually certain that McAfee's team lost. Comment down below if we're wrong, but I I think you're right. Yeah, King. Well, <laughs> if we're wrong now, I've, my certainty's gone straight out the window. <laughs> so is um, if side? anyone's interested, yeah, if if anyone's interested in the women's tag, it's uh, Sasha and Naomi are the favourites of four to six, and then it's three favorite. to one or bigger for everyone else. Quite a heavy favourite. Yeah, um, the team did lose. Yeah. Right, good. <laughs> did um, and Johnny Knoxville is going to meet Sami Zayn, according to the odds. Yeah. I mean, that makes sense because that's a, a one match that's not anything serious. No. Uh, really? Mm, uh, he's going to be my second lock, I think. So that about covers all the news, but I just wanted to cover a little bit of trivia. A little, yeah, a little cool one to bring up at any quiz nights or anything going forward. Uh, when Randy Orton goes into WrestleMania, he'll be the first person in history to have walked into WrestleMania at not at the same time, but at some point WWE Champion, World Heavyweight Champion, uh, Intercontinental Champion. United States champion. Now, he didn't defend the Intercontinental Championship mania. He was just Intercontinental champion when they had that match with Rock and Sock Connection. And, ah, uh, yeah, I remember that. And, of course, tag champion is will be next week. So he's the first person in history to have done that. Which, if you've been around and as much as Randy Orton for the last 20 years, then Price that hasn't happened sooner, to be honest. Crazy. It's a testament to him, though, isn't it, really? He has literally outlasted a hell of a lot of people. Yeah, it really has. So that covers all the news. Uh, if I'm forgetting anything, let us know in the comments below or tweet it out to us at honor underscore club. Without further ado, I'll pass you over to Rate Wrestle, who's going to rate our matches of the week so far. Wonderful, yep. I haven't got a jingle yet. I'm still working on that, so I'll tune back next week. 
it's it's going to be bad. Um, but yeah, so uh, if we start with as usual, start from SmackDown because that was on uh, Friday, March eighteenth. Um, SmackDown the week prior, um, if you remember, it wasn't great. Uh, nothing. I can't even think of anything that was well. Like I enjoyed the Lesnar spots, which I enjoyed the Lesnar spots this week. But yeah, there was nothing I can even remember happened except for a. They were obviously the sad news about Big E. Mm. Um, but yeah, so this week was actually I enjoyed it. Um, so it started off with um, a, they keep showing the Roman Reigns Lesnar package from Madison Square Garden, um, trying to get that over everywhere. Um, and then you have the Roman uh, Roman Reigns starts coming down, and you know that's like a big thing straight away when Roman Reigns starts the show. Like he just is the star at the moment. Like there's no, I don't think there's anyone close to him. Who's got a lot yeah. of the essence at the moment? I don't know if you two agree. Yeah, absolutely. Like right. he's just, he feels like the only one in SmackDown with the it factor. Uh, Drew McIntyre, very distant second. Yeah, there's there's no one close. Absolutely no one close to Reigns. Yeah, and then obviously he's got Heyman next to him as well. You know, the ultimate mouthpiece, and he's not even talking to Heyman, and he's still a highlight. Uh, but yeah, they talk about the Madison Square Garden beatdown. Um, and then Heyman gets an update from Lesnar because you know they're still texting pals, um, saying that he's, uh, his plane's been stopped and they end up he's um, it's been downed, is it in Sasasu one mm-hmm. where Lesnar lives? Um, and so obviously Reigns instantly knows that he can talk sh- shit about Lesnar because he's not going to be there. Um, he was basically calling him a wimp and starts talking, and suddenly out of nowhere, Heyman goes, Oh, oh, oh no, trouble chief. Lesnar's here, <laughs> you know, <laughs> and then instantly like, uh, Roman Reigns like, nope, walks out the <laughs> ring. You can finish this, and um, it goes to a bit of a break. Then you're they're out back trying to get into the uh, the car, and then out of nowhere, Lesnar's in uh, his good old forklift because you know Lesnar drives a forklift nowadays, and smash. Just have them lying around, apparently. Yeah, well, to be fair, it, yeah, <laughs> um, yeah, he <laughs> smashes it into the car, flips it after the uh, they eventually get out of it. And some, there's some. Did you notice the weird editing? Yeah, they cut the commercial break right before this happened, and then we get to see what happened during the commercial break. Yeah, there was just weird right. editing like that, and then there was like, it was like they showed it from Lesnar's point of view doing it. No, no, the Reigns' point of view. Then they showed them kind of escaping. Then they showed it from Lesnar's point of view of doing it. It was like they cut it a bit weird. Oh yeah, it's um, obviously pre-recorded, which makes it even yeah. more baffling. They did it on a commercial break. It was a fun, it was just, a fun spot. I don't know how we're meant to suspend belief enough to believe that no one got injured there. I mean, I, I'm all for like telling yourself that, yeah, okay, that that's feasible. But this guy has just drove a forklift through two windows with four people in a car, and no one's got it. There's precedent. There's the the monster truck. Uh, there's the the. NWO ambulance, right? uh, the way Mick Foley pinned the rock in the empty stadium match using the forklift and the pallet. Yeah. Right. There is precedent there that forklifts. People get buried alive, so. Yeah. I mean that's yeah. that's pretty brutal though. There's like when so when someone smashes glass next to you, you're expecting cuts and stuff like that. Just a little bit of realism like cuts or something i don't know he was just all fresh faced when he got out of the car he was just like all right okay is the tribal chief <laughs> that's that's my reasoning let's move on um but yeah and then listener uh cuts a, just a quick fiery promo in the ring basically saying he's gonna crack kick the crap out of reigns after he nearly killed him fair enough i don't know uh, who shows if he's a he's a nice guy there if he's uh he's nearly killed reigns and he went oh now i'm gonna kick the crap out of you it's a bit of a weird uh way to go about it He's the baby face in the field. Yeah. He's doing it well, though. <laughs> it's the best Lesnar you will ever see as a baby face. Yeah. Like, years ago, you would have never, ever seen Lesnar as a good baby face. Yeah, definitely. Um, yeah, so that's kicked off SmackDown. It was a, it was a nice kickoff. Um, and then it, uh, we started with the Rick Bogues and Shinsuke Nakamura defeating the, the Los Lotharios. Um that guy that on cage match is going to be gutted. He was calling for the Los Lotharios every part of the review, and they get squashed in four minutes. 
They didn't really get squashed. Basically, what happened was they were on top of Nakamura, about all people, like battering Nakamura. And obviously, you get the good old uh, quick tag in, the hot tag. Then Rip Boogs just destroys them both within like 20 seconds. Yeah. I don't know where, where that booking is. But uh, yeah, he just smashes them. Big meaty he looks man. good. Yeah, he looks good. He looks like a jacked up Freddie Mercury. Like, it just happened. Um, and then, yeah, he beat him with the cut off the do, and then he um, that military slam, and it was just a quick finish. Yeah. Well, it, I mean, it's what it's what they needed, Nakamura and Boogs. So, just Nakamura is the guy getting beaten up. <laughs> just Nak- I know out of them two, it probably. Even when, even though he's a big guy, like Nakamura is Nakamura. Yeah, but can you can you picture right using Vince's logic, not like regular logic, just think like Vince. Can you imagine the big meaty man being the one that gets the heat? Yes. No. 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 I can't. No. Um, <laughs> you've ruined everything now, and I can't move on with this rest of this review. Uh, sorry. <laughs> 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 Yeah, it's, it was just what it was. It was to get, as you said, it's to get Boogs and Nakamura over their total match. Um, I rated it one and a quarter. It was there. Uh, it was under five minutes, so there's no cage match reviews, unfortunately, so we don't get to hear what that guy fought at the match. Um, very good. I'm sure we'll hear it somewhere else. <laughs> oh, no, yeah, it'll probably be in the Drew McIntyre match. It'll just be nothing about the Drew McIntyre match. You'll be like, what's the fairy? He's got battered. <laughs> yes, yeah, straight away, um, which is unusual for SmackDown. It went straight to another match. Like, there was nothing really in between. There was a break. Um, and then this was the uh, McIntyre and the Viking Raiders versus Happy Corden, Jinder Mahal, and Shanky. Most random team in the world, in my eyes. No, it makes Shanky, it just looks like a bad team, don't it? Yeah. The, the name Shanky just doesn't do anything. It's just. Yeah, uh... I keep accidentally calling Shaky. Like, it's just a mid. Um. <laughs> That literally just followed the same suit of the other match, but a bit longer, um, where it was a bit of bit. So uh, Corbin was trying to avoid McIntyre. They were beaten down on the, uh, the Viking Raiders. Big meaty team men. Um, and then McIntyre came in, destroyed everyone, Claymore well kicked on. Yeah, pretty standard for a Drew match these days. Yeah, it's cleared the house, Claymore, and it was done. Um, it was a bit better than the... Um, Rip Boogs match. I rated one and a half, just a bit better, but not. it was there. What did you guys think? Yeah, I mean, uh, it's your typical big guy match. Uh, nice, fast paced, but it had a house show feel to it. Uh, it was de- <laughs> definitely felt like a house show match. Not necessarily a bad thing, it's still entertained, but. Absolutely nothing of significance arose from it. It's just a very basic way of making Corbin v McIntyre. That, that's the way I looked at it. We know that's going to be the match. Match so, we all want to see. I feel like I've seen it like 15 times. Yeah, but did you see it in Mania? That's the question. Remember the <sighs> no, but the seeing Corbin... Of Vortex of Evil back in like 2018, 2019? Yeah. Yeah. I didn't think Corbin was ever going to make it out of that, to be fair. I thought he'd be released. Uh, yeah. Um, Corbin gets a lot of hate. He is a good mid-card heel. Uh, oh, no, Corbin. he is. But I just... It's, Against it's McIntyre just a bit is not, though. Because you know McIntyre no. is just going to run for him. There's not really a... Even when they beat him down, you know, it was it was going to get retaliated within weeks. Yeah. Um, but yeah, so uh, I rated that one and a half. Um, a guy called Paul 04. Um, no one really cares about this feud. I just want it to end at Mania, and no more matches between these guys, please. At least he's honest. <laughs> You're not wrong, Paul. You're not wrong. <laughs> he also added the word "please." He didn't say "please." Um, that was just my. Whole, I don't know why he added "please," but he just added niceness to the view. Um, mm. But then we had a segment with uh, Sammy Vines. Sammy Vines. I'm going to go with that. Continuing. Uh, Sammy Zayn. Um, and you try any new cornet stick. <laughs> Sammy Baines, I don't know, look, he's not a muscly guy, is he? Um, but yeah, so they basically announced um, that the he wanted he challenged Knockville to an ODQ match. Well, it's um, anything goes. It was, it was anything apparently goes. That, apparently that's different. Tell me the difference. 
the Ryzen one uh, might... core in WWE, yeah. the rest uh, they specified it's not an ODQ, it's anything goes. Could throw a corner. Makes it. the Bring world a difference. Mm -hmm. Um so yeah, Sammy basically said he's gonna beat up Johnny Knoxville. And Johnny Knoxville, I was really his promo was really good. I think it's he's just the way he, it's the way he, he he comes across and there's some of the words he uses like he ended with your toast <laughs> it's, like a, it's like an 80s heel <laughs> I always just think back to his uh, the bit from I don't even think it was one of the movies I think it was a TV show where like, he was fighting Butterbean in the mall that was the uh, first movie yeah Yeah, and like he, he did an interview with GQ when it was to the uh, autocomplete interviews for the bring up like Google searches yeah, yeah. Uh, and apparently that was a legit concussion. Like he was snoring because he was out. Yeah, look, uh, my favourite line about that that part is after when he um he's in the car if he's got battered by butterbean. He turns around, he goes, "Is butterbean okay?" <laughs> <laughs> um, yeah, I'm actually slightly looking forward to it because it will just be a funny match. I'm expecting Sammy Zayn is good. Um, it's going to be mental because Johnny Knoxville will do something mad. Jackass guys are getting involved as well. Like, if yeah. Preston doesn't splash Sami Zayn at one point, I'm not going to be... Or Wee Man splashes Sami Zayn. <laughs> uh, Hornswoggle's going to get involved. Yeah. I can see Steve-O, and he'll sell properly this time because he doesn't want another beating like he took off in Maga. Oh, that <laughs> wasn't good, was it? That was just pain. Yeah, it's because he kept getting up. Like, he, he said in his podcast and stuff, and every time he talks about it, he was too dumb to stay down and play dead. He kept getting back up, so of course they kept putting him back down. Yeah, it's because it's wrestling, isn't it? You have to right. kind of like, why is this guy getting up? <laughs> right. But yeah, it's going to be a fun match. I, it, I, it, which is bad. I think it might be a whole lot of mania. I'm not um, ironically looking forward to it. I genuinely think it's going to be fun. Yeah, it's just going to be mental. Um, but then, weirdly, um, we went into my match of the night. Not weirdly that it was a match of the night, because last week, uh, the women's matches weren't great. The tag team matches, they're all very short. Bad matches, really. Um, I did write at the top before all this started, Hodgepodge Central. Uh, just like, because it's Banks and Hay and me, who Agin and Rhea Ripley and uh, Liv Morgan. Mm -hmm. But yeah, honestly, this was my favourite match of the night. Uh, yeah. It was just a good tag team match. They listened to me. That's what it is. <laughs> listen to the podcast, even though it was it was out probably about three hours before the show, uh, um, and they decided to have a good match. Um, like they still threw in the Car Carmella doesn't give a crap about what's happening. She's too busy about a wedding. You know we have to keep panning to that. One thing I've noticed though with these matches, I don't know if you have the same opinion that Rhea Ripley just looks head above and shoulders above everyone else. Oh yeah, mate. It's very obvious. There's only two Sasha stars Banks in that in match. There. Yeah. Yeah, Sasha and Rhea. Even that, like, Sasha Banks is in there, but Ripley looks a lot better. She looks like, Rhea Ripley looks like she's playing with her kid sisters. <laughs> it looks like she's just throwing them around. <laughs> um, yeah, so there were some good spots in there. Naomi Springboard kick um, cut off was very good. Um, had the Banks hot tag and the, uh, the which ended up with a Meteorian near fall on Morgan. Uh, there was another near fall on Ripley, so they were pretty dominant at the time, Naomi and um, Banks, uh, which were broken up by Liv. And then you had the good old, you know, we need a Tower of Doom spot. Which was a good one, to be fair. Yeah, it was a good block. It was a good spot. And then, um, I, to be fair, even the ending I enjoyed, because it's one of these ones they're getting another tag team involved, but like, Baser and Natalia look legit. They look like a team. Yeah, they just look like bruises. <laughs> like Baisley like, is legit. I remember they came back from the advert earlier in the match, and even McAfee was just like, these teams have been thrown together. And I'm just like, yeah, it, it's not good. It's not, I don't think it works when you just randomly throw stuff together. You throw shit well, at a wall and open something sticks, and it ain't going to work. Um, so all tag teams start that way, but not like six tag teams in one week. You know, it's kind of you know at least build. Yeah, the well, they're, they're all just in the same the match. Same. Exactly, you don't put them all in the same match to expose how blatantly obvious it is they've just been thrown together. You at least have yeah. one established team in there. 
then what I wrote here, it just led to a women's clusterfuck, which was just everyone beating the shit out of everyone, and then Baszler and Natalia standing tall. Um, but yeah, that was my match in the night. Um, I rated that two and three quarters. I really enjoyed that match. Yeah. It got time yeah. in 12 minutes. Yeah, it was fun. It, there was nothing wrong with it whatsoever. It's just random. Yeah, it was a random, but at least it was a good match. It was like random last week, but it was a bad match. <laughs> yeah. I think it's a good match when there's a, um, a no contest at the end. It's Proving that actually it was a wrong, like even no contest most of the time, you don't think that's a good ending. Uh, but they gave it time. Um, to be yeah. fair, most of the ratings on Cage Map, so the lowest is a five out of ten, which isn't bad, which is Sasha and Naomi should have won to build them as a tag team to eventually win at Mania. My grade would be a bit better, but I really don't like DQ finishes. That's not really a bad review of the match. Yeah. No. That was why Quieros. To me, that would have been a three, three and a half if there had been a clear winner. Not a DQ finish, but even the DQ finish makes somewhat sense in the context of it. Well, no, no one's won, have they? So it's like you're keeping that mystique up a little bit, I suppose. Exactly. Yeah. Um, but then, yeah, then I skipped over really quickly. Yeah, this is when Noxu actually accepted the match afterwards. After this part, I thought he accepted it during that promo, but yeah, he accepted it. A uh, Zane was toast. Um, I wrote here all of the ta- tag teams, which I don't know why I did that. We're going to move past. Uh, does anyone know why I would write all of the tag teams? Were you trying to work out if any had been together for more than two months? I don't know if it was like a build-up of like a tag team match or something like that, but um, no idea. Then Pat McAbee comes down and does a does a very good promo, basically discussing his history of why he wants to why he wants to get into the business. Um, he boosted Cole, saying Cole Cole was the reason he got into SmackDown, which. No one says something nice about Cole, which is nice. Uh, look at Vince McMahon on his podcast. You know. <laughs> Horrible. Is that word yeah. I fucking... Yeah, I hate that guy. <laughs> um, and then pretty much I'm going to... McAvee needs to apologise or he's going to get no match, which is just a bit of a crap thing. Um, and then, yeah, McAvee did apologise. Apologised that he's sorry that he's going to kick his ass. It's in theory accepted as an apology. I don't know. <laughs> yeah, it was a proper weird apology. He just said, <laughs> I'm sorry that your parents hate you. And I'm sorry that you're a punk bitch. And that was like good enough, apparently. Like, oh, to be okay. fair, the sorry you're a punk bitch was a great line. Oh, it was. <laughs> right, yeah, but he is so natural right, and right, with that mic. Uh, I like McAfee. Yeah, I think he's great. He's annoyed me to begin with, but his energy is infectious. Yeah. I think what got him over for me is that match with Cole, because no one expected what that was going to be, and then he's doing springboard suplexes. You know, and he looks natural doing it. isn't just like... Because Bad Bunny doesn't look natural doing the stuff he does. Pat McAvee does. I enjoyed the Bad Bunny stuff, to be fair. It's, it's a good, think... It was good, but he, was just, he didn't look natural, you know, and it's just... I think yeah. it's because of the size he is. Whereas Maccabee yeah. is a beast. Yeah. Um, but then yeah, then this led to the main event, um, which was a poor match. Um, so Kofi versus Holland. So obviously they were building on the whole Holland broke Kofi, Kofi's neck. Holland broke Big E's neck. So Kofi went out of the block straight away. by beating the crap out of him. Got the ring. Did a trust fall, which completely missed, which was very awkward. Um... And went to the break. Holland was on top after the break uh, for five seconds. Then Kofi was on top again. Um, then the ref kicks out Seamus and Butch. Butch. Um, because he was trying to get involved. And for some reason, I don't know if this is a DQ in most worlds. Butch has been the scrappy kid getting dragged to the back. And he runs down and jump, tries to jump in the ring again. The ref just went, yeah, get out. That was it. There was not like, I'll throw you out while you're in the ring. Like, Stop this. Do you think he didn't like unless they put their hands on a competitor in the match, it's not a DQ. Yeah. Yeah, I didn't stand outside the ring then. If you even if you got kicked out, might as well just stand outside the ring. Yeah, there is Uh, that. (laughs) Yeah, like if that was the case. Um and then Ridge won. Yeah, I would not have had Ridge right. Not because he doesn't deserve it or anything like that, just from a story point. Like, Kofi should be getting a bit of revenge on Biggie's behalf instead of also losing to him. Just felt a bit flat for me, but 
Yeah, I think it's they're trying to skip over that the Big E thing happened, aren't they? They're carrying on with the story they were doing. Like, if Big E didn't get injured, I think this is what would have happened. Yeah. I just think they um, would have called an audible on it. Yeah. yeah. It would have been a good feeling, especially for the fans, just seeing Kofi get the win to kind of not get, like, revenge, but, you know. Um, and then they just beat down. You had Scrappy Doo come back down, uh, which was what I'm going to call Butch from now on. That's what he reminds me of, Scrappy Doo of the uh, the gang. Yeah, um, you look like Peaky Blinders. He's mad. Yeah, he's from your neck of the woods, isn't he, right? Yeah, you know, he's a Dudley boy, I'm sure. Yeah, um, Pete Dunn lived two streets away from me. Um, he lived um, like literally, yeah, probably about two or three streets away from me. Because um, he used to be the one of the champions in my local Fed, um, Kamikaze Pro. Um, then he went massive. He was nice. all over the UK, and then he was all over America, and then WWE went, "We'll have a bit of that," and then that's the uh, what happened. And now, now we've got a butch. Now we've got a butch. <laughs> but I'd love because I did a training session with Pete Dunne. I'd love to turn around to him. What in six years' time? What about butch? <laughs> <laughs> I don't um, think well what he, he would have told you as well. <laughs> he would have slapped me in the face. Pete Dunn was that kind of guy. He was proper intense, Pete Dunn. He would have probably just kicked the crap out of me. Um, cause I'm not going to hold saying, you know, I would hold my own. He would have killed me. Um, but yeah, um, yeah. so that was the end of that. And then to top it off, you had the Charlotte came down to um, add more fire to the Rousey Charlotte feud. Completely, what well, I completely forgot to mention because I was leading the, uh, the reviews last week. I completely forgot about the beatdown in the car park. Uh, oh, which was yeah, actually good, yeah. Oh, I completely forgot it happened, um, but it was actually a good beatdown, and they showed it back. Yeah, and I was like, oh, yeah, that was that was pretty good. Um, Ronda Rousey, like she was just adding fuel to the fire. Ronda Rousey comes down with a mean in business. Um, and what was annoying me, uh, the whole ring got ruined by the random kendo sticks. Mm-hmm. Like, the most randomly placed kendo sticks in the world. Like, did Rousey got Charlotte in a was it a ankle lock if I remember? She got in some kind of move and then Rousey. No, no, that wasn't it. Charlotte instantly grabbed the kendo stick, didn't she? As Rousey was coming down. Yeah, it was hidden behind the stairs. But that's randomly there. Have a big brawl. Um, Rousey's on top, and then Charlotte finds another kendo stick by the timekeeper's thing because you know timekeeper has his kendo stick. A keto and stuff like that. Mm-hmm. Um, then yeah, she put her for a table. And that was the end of that. It was a good looking spot, but my one big problem with this feud is Charlotte keeps calling her a one horse pony, uh, one trick pony. You're not going to get me in the armbar. The whole feud's been centered around her trying to get her in the ankle lock. So she's got more than one trick, she's got the armbar and the ankle lock. <laughs> yeah. She won't get her in the armbar. That's all that matters. So Charlotte will come out on top of her mentally at the end. You didn't beat me by the armbar. <laughs> you uh, may have broke my ankle, but... <laughs> I, will I, I will find it hilarious. I will find it hilarious if Charlotte's shoulders aren't down properly for the finish of their match. Yeah. Oh, no. That's genuinely going to be a thing as well. Uh, I forgot to mention a comment before we uh, move on to Raw. Um, this was for the Kofi match. This was from Paul 04 as well, the guy that actually just written noisish comment. But So it was just, wrong winner. Kofi should have won, pretty much what you've just said. And please just change Pete's name back. Butch is a horrible name. Yes, what the uh, hell is that how it is? Butch is just a nickname, which I'm still hopeful it is. But he's still Pete Dunn. But we call him Butch. That was their thing. It's a nickname, fair enough. It's a bit dumb. But I call you Rate Wrestle, that's not your name. I call you Smooth or Frosty, yeah, that that's not your name. Like, there's no real difference there in my eyes. If that's what they're doing. If everything on his like WWE bio, like any future updates to Supercard, a butch instead of Pete Dunn on the card, then I'll start getting annoyed. At the moment, they're just playing it off like it's his nickname. My real name's Rating Time, so you didn't know that, did you? Rating Time. Oh, is that what Rate's short for? Oh. Yeah. <laughs> rating Time. Let me get a shirt and put that on there. Rating Time, <laughs> yeah, that's delicious. <laughs> 
I've got my bow weakness now, and that does. <laughs> Um, but yeah, um, overall SmackDown, it wasn't amazing, but it, I think in essence of how bad it was previously, uh, it wasn't terrible last time, but it wasn't good. Whereas this one was just me, middle of the road, but yeah, had a decent match on there as well. The women's match was definitely the match of night. I don't know if you feel different. Yeah, I enjoyed that mm-hmm. tag. Uh, obviously, the DQ made sense. Obviously, it would be nice to get a clean winner. As far as match quality wise, it would have bumped up maybe a little bit, but I'm not obsessed at the DQ finish. And I've just remembered why I wrote all of the tag teams because the first three matches were tag matches. That's what I was there. Uh, that's why I wrote that. I just, it just popped in my head. Yeah, there was three tag matches in the singles match. Um, yeah. Moving swiftly on, we went on to Raw, um, which once again was a lot better than Raw last week. We were both match- watchable this week. Yeah, like match wise, like they were most of the matches were a bit better. They weren't like amazing, but then obviously the main event was very good. Yeah. Like they were at least still a bit better. Um but yeah, we started off with Stone Cold coming down to the ring. <laughs> this was great. No can tell this me was great. Difference. Stone Cold Kevin Owens. Uh, which I writ Brill next to it. Yeah, I it he went full for it as well. It wasn't just the good old let's play his music and it's Kevin Owens. It's Kevin Owens as Stone Cold. Yeah. Oh, like, even when the camera was far away, I still thought it was Austin. Mm-hmm. And then he zoomed in. I was like, no, wait, that's me. That is actually great. Um, and then he started running through the uh, the Stone Cold phrases, as you would. And um, that's the bottom line and so forth. What? It, oh, it no, work what? So well. I don't want what to be a thing again. That needs to stop. Well, then, I'm hoping yeah. that this whole thing, the way he did it, it annoyed the crowd that he was doing it back. So yeah. hopefully a few more, uh, if the what chance are hitting, they just cut the promo and go what back to them until they stop. Yeah. Like, it's, it's been, what, 18, year, 18, 19 years of that it's horrible, horrible it, yeah. chant. Has no place in modern wrestling. Like, I hate the watch chance. It's like the worst thing about wrestling crowds. I feel Kill like over the last it. few years, it's not been as bad. But as soon as he it did back. it, I was like, "Oh no, don't even bring it up." Eh? Spanish, um, <laughs> but yeah. Um, and then the Stone Cold theme went on again. Everyone was like, "Oh, here he comes." Even Kevin Owens selling of that as well, like the perfect old oh, shit. It actually is Austin. <laughs> Got him again. Um, it was just a good, good way to get the whole Kevin Owens Stone Stone Cold feud over without Stone Cold being there. Yeah, yeah, yeah. the stunner on the on the on the ring guy wasn't as good this week. Oh, on the guy from the beer, yeah, the, the beer throws, yeah. No, and me the beer. <laughs> <laughs> um, uh, bad uh, memories of the, when the Miz came out and attacked Cena you know, as the Rock. Yes, <laughs> I remember that. Jesus Christ! Bald and his skin, and his skin was peeling, weren't it? The uh, the bowl cap was peeling. <laughs> Did we care? Owens was as well towards the end of that. <laughs> I think it worked with Owens as well because it was supposed to. Be. <laughs> oh, but yeah, it was a good way to start. And it carried on. Uh, Seth Rollins promo at back. Seth Rollins is turning into the maniacal Joker, which I love. It's like insanity happening. Um, you actually got Cody Rhodes chants as well, which is probably the first. I can't remember if there's been any Rhodes chants. Proper ones. No, I've only heard him this week. That was yeah, the first like, time I heard When they were hinting at it, they weren't like proper. Like, there was like, yeah, or like a yay, but there wasn't like a proper, we want Cody kind of chants. They were, they were probably piped in. So let's not get ahead of ourselves. Vince McMahon wouldn't do that. Everything's <laughs> real. Real to me, damn it. Um, and then, yeah, so that just carried on the uh, the Rollins sense of monocular. Um, and then we went to a Mysteri- the Mysterios versus the Dirty Dogs. It was a um, match. Yeah, it was decent. Like, um, the double dogs leaning to. Um, yeah, yeah, completely forgot, but yeah, so there's a double dive and then Rollins comes out in the middle of the match, you know, to add to the insanity. Um, 
and it's like a kind of like they're against me kind of thing going on, isn't it? Because they start cutting his mic off. So they keep doing as well. I thought they did it. I thought the first time it happened, I actually thought it wasn't supposed to happen. He played it off and he carried on talking for a while and then it, they cut it off again and obviously he was pissed and went off. Mm-hmm. Um, and yeah, so they had the beat down on uh, good old Ray. Um, good, some good tag team offense. And Dom got the hot tag in and then it was just a quick finish. Um, Dominic with the B619, which I didn't know he was doing that. Uh, the 619 splash. So he's literally just doing his father's finishes at the moment, aren't he? Yeah. Charlie, in my head before he started doing them, I was like, I don't know what Dominic's finishing, and he literally did it as soon as I said it. And I was like, oh, okay. <laughs> he doesn't uh, have anything of his own moveset wise. Yeah, it was a decent tag team match. Like, I didn't write the, um, I put it as a two. Goal. It was there, but it was it just to build the Mysterios and the Paul and the Miz match. Um, and it was mainly there. So after the match, Miz attacks Mysterio and steals his mask because, you know, no one's ever saw Rey Mysterio at his mask. Yeah, that, that baffled me a bit. I it's just, just like, I yeah, think, we've, I did we've seen find this. it funny how he was doing the, the old Russian wifey with the tail wrapped around, but with just enough of his eyes so he could like, see what was going on up the ramp. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> the way he was holding it, he still had a little hole so he could see it. <laughs> I'd understand this more if Mysterio lost his mask in Triple I or packed if he was there or Ring of Honor, you know, somewhere that isn't what's owned by WWE and everyone can see it on the network. <laughs> it's not it's yeah. just it's the honor of the mask in it. They're trying to hold that it was never taken. Um but yeah that just added foil to the Miz. Um I did like the Dominic spot you said with the towel though. It was like the first thing he thinks of get a towel like, <laughs> Yeah <laughs> not get the cameras off them. Uh, get a towel. Um but yeah so that just carried on the feud. Um, as I said, I rated that too. You said you liked it a bit more than that, didn't you, RGX? Yeah, uh, but I did find funny just before I got my rating is I didn't realise that uh, Rey Mysterio was completely bald now. I, mean, I just thought he they'd had like a short haircut. I didn't realise he was like completely bald. Uh, I don't think the last time I would have saw him without his mask. No, I can't remember. Yeah. Right. Because he even used to have like the kind of mask that was basically just the strips at the back, as opposed to full coverage. So you would still see like a mohawk or whatever underneath it. Yeah, I do remember that. But that was the first time I've like seen him like like completely bald, and it was the first time he actually looked old to me. Like, if that makes any sense. Because yeah. yeah, he still looks quite young with the mask on. Yeah, he just looked like Rey Mysterio, like he'd never changed. Yeah, but there was something Think quite... about a mask, though, isn't it? Mm-hmm. But uh, yeah, I thought it was a good entertaining match. I like my kind of fast-paced action, so I would have got a two and a half on it. Not my match of the week or anything, but it's still fun. Um, look, this is a weird take um, from a guy called Chad Broder. Um, what a silly match. I get that. I get this match only exists to try and get viewers to tune into NXT 2.0. I don't think that's what they were trying to do with that match. Um, but Dominic just isn't good. She's green. He's not bad though. Like I've seen much worse than Dominic. Mm. Uh, and the Dirty Dogs just keep losing, which might, yeah they do. Um, even though Ziggler is the champion, which I think is silly. The champion, but it doesn't mean he's going to win in a tag team match. No. Yeah. It's not like uh, Ray's going to jump down to NXT to take the title off him. There's, well, there's nothing wrong with Ziggler being the NXT champion, and I will not hear anything else said about it. I have buried the podcast now. <laughs> the only fans we had. <laughs> I'm going I'm to talk about a, a bit about NXT once we've covered Raw. Uh, I, yeah. I did give it a watch. I didn't rate it, uh, but I did get some notes to give my thoughts on it, but we'll come back to that. Yeah, yeah we good, yeah, because I've seen the match as well, as I said, I haven't, well, I haven't watched them. Um, but yeah, so it's uh, continued the Miz feud. Then you had another Rollins segment with uh, Sonya Deville and um, Adam Pearce. Rollins' breakdown basically continues. Um, he needs to get a match. Is he going to get a match? Um, he's basically the authority. I, they're not the authority, but you know what I mean. They're causing him not to get his WrestleMania moment. Um, and then the match of the night for me, um, Omos versus Commander Aziz and Apollo. 
Something tells me you're being a little bit sarcastic for Ray. Right? <laughs> oh, uh, if you're not. Like a big guy match, you know. This is this reminded me of. Uh, do you remember that match at WrestleMania three? I don't know if you don't. You know that Hulk Hogan versus Andre the Giant match. It was as good <laughs> as that in my mind. Um, but yeah, it's just. I don't know what they're doing with Omos because he's beating everyone, and who's going to beat him? <laughs> they basically did the exact same match they did last week, only this time. Uh, we apologies bounced off him a couple of times. Yeah. Yeah. It was the exact same match. Just, just lasted slightly longer at 2.45 minutes, according to this. Um, but, yeah. It, yeah. A one one arm body slam was very impressive, I'll be honest. Um, well, he's he's promised that, to dominate anyone at Mania now, hasn't he? So. Dominate, Lashley, Dominator. Oh, it, it's both in it. <laughs> As I say, uh, he's going to fight Ron Simmons. Clean and he uh, disappears for good. You know, but he's going to fight Farouk. That's what's going to happen. Dominate. Damn, Damn. yeah. <laughs> um, it was uh, the one arm slam was impressive. The pin was the worst thing I've ever seen in my life. <laughs> <laughs> right, I thought his you know, shoulders were up. Yeah, and, and the ref got down his shoulders up, and he's just going, he's just t- forcing them down. I think it's easy. His shoulders popping out. I had to. I saw the pin on replay because I went out to make a, a sandwich. I came back and the match was over. Uh, it's the fact <laughs> so that had... ref rightly refused to count it, and instead <laughs> he tried to fix their position. Almost is just like no count it. <laughs> it doesn't try do and rearrange your man... bodies or anything. Why didn't you just do the big man pin of just stacking them and standing on one of them? I keep oh, but yeah. To, like... Yeah, yeah, just uh, it was it was there. I rated it half. I like the one arm slam that built a lot for me. The one arm slam and Z's it did look good. You know, if he does a few more of them, it will be a two star for me. Um, <laughs> but yeah, so you had the um, that was that. There was no cage match comments because it's such a short match. Which probably the reason cage match do that is because they will just shit on people. I'm guessing if uh, they get a chance, probably uh, especially almost. Yeah, so. Um, Following from that, you had the AJ Styles promo. Um, basically, Styles at the start was basically he was depressed. So he got beaten up as a man. He got beaten up and battered. Um, and then his depression turned to anger. Um, he wants the beat your edge up. Wants the batter edge. Um, you know who comes down this moment? Seth Rollins. You know because <laughs> it's just, it's my favourite part of the show. The whole show is the Rollins show this week. Rollins come down, and you did you both know it was going to lead to this straight away as soon as he started speaking about Edge, like, and then oh, Rollins yeah. came down. As soon, as soon as he came out for Styles, you knew where it yeah. was going. No, oh, and I love how he went about it. It was like, you hurt Styles, let me help you. <laughs> you can not all face Edge. Um, obviously, Styles was going hell no, which instantly we knew what was going to happen. This was going to lead to another match because, you know, I just love making every other wrestler uh, Rollins maybe get a title, not a title opportunity, a main event match. Um, but yeah, it was a good, another good promo, um, just leading to a very good main event, which we'll talk about at the end. Um, and then we went backstage, you had Carmella and um, Zelina. Um, I wrote down here, which I think I was being sarcastic at the time, uh, the mega powers are combusted. <laughs> She called her a troll, didn't she? Like a little troll or something. Uh, I was just like, okay. Then, yeah, there was a big fight scene that we all wanted, the combusting of the mega powers. Um, mm-hmm. and that faded away. And then you had um, Liv versus... Then it was Liv and Rhea um, versus Natalia and Baszler, which is a follow-on from SmackDown, which I like. Um, at least they're trying to do something logical. Um, Liv is just there to take the heat at the start because she's the smaller of the two, Rhea Ripley. Uh, Baszler, Baszler did a running knee that looked grim. Not like bad grim, but grim as in like it hurt. Mm-hmm. Like, no. I'm a big fan of Shayna Baszler. Like, her NXT run was really good. She's just legit, like, Shayna Baszler. Yeah. She's, she's legit. Fair, like, this is a weird take because people didn't like it. Oh, he didn't mind the Nia Jax showing about us at the tag team. No. Like, the best thing Nia Jax did 
was probably the worst, one of the worst things Shayna Baszler did because the NXT rumble log. Um, then there was some good tag team heat on uh, Morgan. They just kept battering her. Some good tag team moves. Um, and then suddenly out of nowhere, it was just a proper abrupt finish. He just dominated Liv and won. I thought there was going to be like a proper comeback and everything like that, but no, it was just done with. Yeah, good. Yeah, we're good. But yeah, so it was just um, a very abrupt. Uh, it just ended. It was really like I didn't expect it just to end. I thought like they'd have a bit of a comeback, but yeah, just they double teamed Morgan and one, two, three. It was over. Um. So yeah, I rated that one and three quarter stars. And then the the best part of the night, the mega powers got back together. Well, they, didn't they just go to yeah, the finish of the, the match again? Didn't they call the heart attack an assisted clothesline? Oh yeah, I yeah. Heart attack with Natalia from the night the heart foundation <laughs> knocked you down. Yeah, can't even allow her to have the heart attack. No, it was just like an assisted clothesline. It clearly isn't that. Uh, it's just really abrupt, which was very surprised by. Um, but yeah, so that was a three minute match. I rated that um, three quarters, and as I said, the Mega Powers got back together and beat the crap out of everyone else. Into, I'm thinking, except for the Knoxville match, it's going to be my favourite match of Mania. Yeah, yeah I, th- I think that will st- still be a good match. Obviously, I don't feel there's enough heat because none of the teams. Been to cover long, but it doesn't mean that the match will be good. I think there'll be some good spots. Uh, every single one in that match is a decent worker, at least. Uh, Carmella, I'd say, is the weakest, but that's the slightly worst of a bit of a good bunch. She's not a bad worker, she has character as well, well, don't she? Yeah, yeah, but yeah, um, they can all carry themselves like they're all. Good workers, so it will still be good. Just can't be wait lot. to get graves on commentary. Well, funny you should say that. You were to turn down the crowd noise slightly. <laughs> <laughs> uh, I don't know what you mean. I was going to include um... Tony Storm only fans bit in the news to use that joke, but uh, well. Everyone knows what we're talking about at this point. <laughs> Good grief. I think you could turn that much noise and that much noise to the amount of people but brought that only fans. Um, yeah, she yeah, did so kill it, apparently. She did, according to mathematical... Um, I don't know who it was. I don't know if it was Sean Ross or it was someone else. They worked out it was like 10 grand she weren't owned in an hour or something stupid. Jeez. I think in WWE she probably earned around about 50, 60 for the year, maybe. High oh, money, yeah. I'm sure. No, I'm sure basic main roster is two ten. I think last okay. I remember the the basic for main roster. NXT By ten grand an hour, I'm sure. Ten grand in an hour isn't bad. She pretty she probably made the good choice because that was in the first hour. She's probably exploded more. Um, yeah, moving on. Um, Becky Lynch's promo was the weirdest promo. She was putting on a weird accent. And I know what happened? Did you notice? It was just odd, but it wasn't. I don't even know what the accent was. No, it didn't sound like it for bits of it. I was just like, I don't understand what's going on here. It's it weird, rambling. and it doesn't sound like Becky Lynch. All I can but think is I, maybe she's still recovering she's selling. from the throat injury. Yeah. Like, because yeah. her throat injury was legitimate. Like, she had bro- like broken her larynx or something like that. Could be. It's just it was a weird accent. It was just full on rambling as well. So it just did I just zoned out of this promo. I don't know what she was on about. Yeah, it wasn't one, one of you could summer it always, yeah. Um and we were moaning last week because we didn't understand why Fury was doing stuff with Bala. Do you know why? So we could fight him on Monday and we're all the next week. <laughs> um yeah, so obviously uh, they introduced the special special guest commentator. McAvee. Uh McAvee. Hold McAvee. on, you, McAvee. You, you're missing something. Just before you go any further, 
They've announced that VMA is coming on April the 4th. Before the match started. Bro, after me, it's a big deal again. Yeah. To win the title. <laughs> April 4th, Via. Here he comes. Gonna win the I know there's people out there who want to know that. Big fear fans on the Honor Club podcast. <laughs> Special guest. Well, I've been hinting at a new member of the Honor Club. Yeah, it's different. Yeah. Getting his, his commitments are uh, between us and WWE. <laughs> um, we got the better deal. Um, so uh, the announced McAvee. McAvee was the star of the old match. Like, you'd think in a Theory versus Balor match. Look, that's going to be a good match. But the whole match was just about McAvee being a dick. In a good way. Yeah, like, he just be, it was just like he was on commentary. He went, hold on one second. Just run to the ring and go, hello. <laughs> and <he's> like, well, <laughs> yeah. <laughs> Yeah, normally when you do that spot, oh, I failed, oh, never mind. I oh, they get ejected by the referee. He just went back to commentary for a bit, wait until the ref's back was turned again, and then ran back up again. It was probably... <laughs> yeah, it was. The most socket I've ever seen in my life. I don't like his hands wearing everywhere. It was like... <laughs> <laughs> Um, but yeah, the there was actually a good false finish in the matchup as well. Um, it was a bit back and forth, but then he... Just... Finishing a uh, Balor and over Fury, but yeah, that match was more about McAvee and Fury than the matchup. Mm-hmm. I rated it two stars because it wasn't really about the match. Um, but yeah, McAvee made most of that match for me. He was yeah, like a so. child. Um, and then on cage match, um, Carreros again. Nothing really happened in this match. Most of it was a distraction caused by McAvee. I was also expecting Damian Priest. Appear at all on Raw, didn't he? No, we don't. Not the first time in a while, he's usually consistently on. Going to be in the battle royal. Is there going to be a battle royal man here? Have they announced that yet? On the pre show, probably. He's going to be in it, aren't they? I don't think the first um, one in the last couple of years. I remember. I went to look up or someone to mention in the comments. Yeah. Remember then you had the Alpha Academy versus RKO Bro? Um, actually, Riddle was getting battered for the old match because obviously they're building towards the Orton tag. Um, Orton won. That was my whole description of the match. Just I enjoyed fun. the match. I didn't think it was bad. Yeah. Just reminded me of the same as the Mahal McIntyre match. The uh, the other match that was on that show that was another one. The other one on that the first match that yeah, literally just followed it. Yeah, it was just another match to get the babyface tag to go over. There was a lot of heat and then there's a quick pop. Yeah, I'll put that as a two, but yeah, what did you you, you really like the match? Uh, I thought the match was all right. I enjoyed the, the beatdown angle after because it actually makes Alpha Academy look, look like a threat. It's up to this point, they hadn't really, which they should. Although they've got yeah. horrible catchphrases in the ring, they are a, they are two good wrestlers. I know everyone kind of shits on o- Otis a bit. Uh, I don't. He, I love Otis, but he has good power spots. Uh, and Gable in the ring is Gable. He's one of the best workers the company's got, in my opinion. It's so, clean yeah. as well. Yeah, everything he does is clean. Oh, like, as far as making them look like credible threats, they, they did its job, so I quite enjoyed it. Especially like the fact that unlike the the match on SmackDown they w- with the women's tag, they waited until the match was done before the run out, so it wasn't a straight copy paste. Uh, I appreciate um, small yeah. details like that. So I'll put that as a two star. Um I said he was just there in my eyes. Um Chad Broder again, because He's the one that's panning on this week's show. Match was just so boring. We have seen this so many times. It's obvious nothing will change. This is just having previews before Mania, which is it's because it's Mania season. I really didn't like to see him turn heel. The heel turn for the Street Profits, and nothing remarkable happened in the ring. There, the opinions there. It's just the yeah. first part of it's pretty much the same. Um, opinion boring. Can I rate his opinion? 
<laughs> Boy. I give his opinion one star. No, that's not that. There we go. But what happens if he said that in Japanese in the Tokyo Dome? <laughs> Unlimited stars. Or if he said it in Meltzer's podcast. <laughs> True to her. I'm not going to mention about the uh, volume turning down. Um, <laughs> anyway, let's move on. Um, and then my match of the night, forget Aziz versus Omos. I completely forgot this match happened. Uh, Dana Brooke and Reggie. This is Tazara and Tamina. Oh, it's so random, this. Or is this the match oh, yeah. Game of Chicken? Uh, it yeah. Was just... Literally, I wrote here, I really can't believe what I'm seeing. <laughs> and not in a good way. <laughs> it was like just over a minute of randomness. In fairness, like... as soon as Dana Brooke went on uh, Reggie's shoulders, I knew exactly where it was going. Yeah. So, um, <laughs> Nowhere. So, <I'm> kind of... <laughs> <laughs> so as iconic as that spot, do you know that mania um, where, I don't know if you've, you know about this mania, where Hogan and Rock just stood in the ring for a few minutes and just stared. What this reminded me of was that iconic. Kills. Yes, literal chills. Salute chills. Yeah. Um, so this is uh, my first zero rating of the podcast. It's been two weeks, but, you know, <laughs> but it just couldn't even give it quarter. Like it was just terrible booking. Just yeah. Well, it's, if you're going to give a minute to something, just make it better than that. A minute five. <laughs> How dare you? <laughs> <laughs> yes, that five seconds made all the difference. <laughs> For him to get on the shoulders, that was as well. Um. And then, yeah, literally the main event, which I wrote here, there's Styles versus Roland. Sit, sit back and enjoy. Yeah. It was always going to be a good match. Yeah, it was. It was really good. Obviously, it wasn't, in my view, as good as their match in 2019. I can't remember which pay-per-view. Uh, and this is what I was going to get to, yeah. As far as an actual TV match, it's one of the best TV matches from WWE this year. All right, it's getting yeah. dodgy now. You said that, God damn it. Um, but yeah, so it was a good match though. Back and forth. You had the good old um, near spot, which needs to happen in every match now, where Ace is getting beaten down outside, and he just makes it in before ten. Uh, yeah. Rollins continues the beat down. Stoles follows it up and getting a uh, full on slapped. And near four after near four, both men just going for it. And the torture at bomb works very good. Name that before Cody wrote, Cody Rhodes. <laughs> What's his face? And cock guy. I've said it now. <laughs> What's his name? Reeves. <laughs> That's his name, isn't it? Yeah, before he said it. Um, yeah, it was just a very good match, but then Edge hit him with um, a chair shot to steal Rollins' his dream. Again, a DQ mm-hmm. finish that actually makes sense. Because Edge <laughs> doesn't want the match with Seth. He wants the match with AJ. So it makes sense it comes out and attacks AJ and not say. Yeah. And it didn't feel like a waste, like after sitting through like nearly 25 minutes of that, like because it was a good match anyway. It wasn't a wasted DQ, like you said, because it made sense. Added to everything, though, it added to Rollins thinking everyone's against him. It added to obviously Stoll still getting crapped on by Edge. Yeah. Um, so is, you... is Rollins going to challenge Edge next week now? To, to take his place in the match of age. He's going yeah. to fight Zane to the right to face Knoxville. <laughs> Please. He's challenge Knoxville. A tag match with Zane versus him and Steve-O. <laughs> if that happens... You heard it here first. Um, but yeah, so I rated that three and a quarter. Yeah. Good matchup. I don't really think you can go much higher than like a four unless it's absolutely exceptional yeah, so on I'm a saying. TV show. Yes, yeah. it's like, a, like you're going like, like the Daniel Bryan's page match the other day. Like yeah. January, December. Yeah. Mm-hmm. Yeah. yeah. I think if you're going to have a commercial break in a match, you can't go above four because. No. See what so, someone must have shat on this match and cage match because if there is a good match, someone's there to ruin your ruin everyone's fun. Um, uh, yeah, here we go. <laughs> Funnily enough, he's named Cage Match Rules a decent match that was on its way to being a good match, but of course, ended with a disqualification finish. Like, why? Because W can't let us have good things. He did, he let us have a good thing. It was a good match. Oh, 
He rated it a Some four people. out of ten. It was like it, that comment wasn't that bad either. So that's but he rated it low. Yeah. I haven't said what did you both think of Raw? In a long time, but I think Raw was my show of the week this week. Like I, I preferred it to Dynamite. Obviously, there was stuff on Dynamite that, like match quality wise, was better than Raw. But I think this what was a show. Time, yeah, like as a show overall, I think Raw was my favorite this week, and I thought I'd never say that. The a uh, Rollins versus the. Uh... It's also my match of the week as well. Yeah, I, mean, I can see that. Week, probably. I will what disagree you... with that uh, when we talk about AEW. Uh, but I'd say that it's up there, definitely top two. Oh, and what do you think, Rosa? What, in terms of like match of the week? or? Overall, raw. Um, but yeah, just the overall raw. It was as well. Last 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 week was so bad that this week looks absolutely unreal compared to it. So I mean, it's it was a watchable. I got it down to two hours because BT takes the adverts out, and I absolutely love it. Um, but yeah, it was watchable. Like if if that's what we're gonna get every week, and I can watch it, fine. Doesn't have to be spectacular. Just make it so it's easy to watch. Yeah. Oh, well, it's just as good. Um, so, yeah, we're going to move on to NXT. Yeah, I've so, watched it, so it's all up to you. Drink so, a beer. Obviously, I heard uh, in a kind of wrong way, took this opinion that when they rebranded NXT 2.0, uh, they're binning all the veterans, they're like moving away from the indie wrestlers, it's no longer a show for wrestling fans. But it's still actually quite entertaining. I went back and watched it uh, just the other day in preparation for the podcast. But I didn't want to take notes. Just took a brief overview uh, and examined the characters. Like, Tony D'Angelo has a really fun gimmick. Uh, like the kind of Tony Soprano-esque. Well, more Tony from Simpsons as opposed to Tony Soprano, but still quite entertaining gimmick. Ron Breaker looks like a like a future main eventer. Uh, the guy just has an air of legitimacy about him. That if it wasn't for Gable Stevenson about to turn up, I think he would be your next Brock Lesnar. But sadly, I think Gable Stevenson's going to jump in and steal his limelight on that. Uh, one dodgy match that really stood out though was Fallon Henry and Electra Lopez. Uh, Fallon Henry is extremely green. Uh, I don't think she was ready for a TV match yet. Uh, oh, that's Tasha Price, that is, isn't it? Yeah, I think so. Uh, but definitely there was a lot of near botches this week, not just on uh, NXT, but on AEW as well, which we'll come on to. Uh, and the main event tag match, the final of the Dusty Classic, with Wendy Chu and uh, the Kotakai against uh, Io Shirai and Kaylee Ray. That was really fun, even though the ending was a bit dumb, where they say instead of going for the tag titles, we're going to insert ourselves into the Women's Championship match at Stand and Deliver. It'd be one thing if there was any kind of authority figure that they'd had a, a segment backstage to ask if they could do that, or even if they said they've spoken to someone who's an authority figure, instead of just coming out and saying, instead of going for the tag titles, we're going to insert ourselves into the, the women's title match, make it a fatal four way. Yeah, I could have killed, yeah. I almost could have killed it for me, but on the whole, like. The show's still quite good, and I know Ziggler gets a lot of hate for being a an old man coming in down there and taking the title away from the, the young guys, but you need veterans to lead the way. It's a whole difference between like a veteran popping down at the performance centre and helping crisp up moves as opposed to 
someone coming down to NXT TV tapings and going right slow down a bit there, you'll get the crowd on board. Right, oh, like keep that wrestled on a bit longer, wait till they're, they're really getting behind you. It's those little things that you just can't teach in a, in a empty training room. You need the, the crowd there watching so you can see, right, speed it up, slow down, right, bumping feed. We've got them in the palm of their hands now, let's go with it. Right, that's the stuff a, a veteran will teach to the young guys, as opposed to just coming down to the performance centre and teaching them to snug up their moves a little bit. The discussion I saw on one of the forums for a mutual member of, I just wanted to make my points clear on that while we are discussing NXT. I don't know if you guys feel the same, but that's my thoughts on it. Yeah, I don't think I could have put it much better than you. Like, you you still need someone who, who's wrestled on TV for God knows how long, knows all your camera angles, because that stuff's important, the crowd, and can teach a guy like Bron Breaker, for example, when to do stuff and when not to. Yeah, it's, I saw the arguments about Ciampa can do that, but how many times do you want to see that match? You need you need fresh as well. So there's only so many veterans in NXT that you can use for stuff like that. So taking Ziggler down is not the worst idea. Making him the champion just brings more people's eyes to it because Dolph Ziggler's the champion in NXT. What's going on? And Ziggler, to be fair, deserves the championship run of some sort. Like... He's one of those, like, they absolutely killed him on the main roster. Like, from years and years of being, making him drop out of the stars, which was totally unfair on him. So, like, this little renaissance run down in NXT is not bad. Like, I, I'm actually a fan of it. But I know his knees are still treating him like a jobber in the main roster. Yeah, even though he's got the NXT title, it's mad. Yeah, it's just... It's hard booking. As I said, I think I said early um, when we were speaking before, and it's like they try and make you feel like NXT isn't part of the universe, even though you know he's the champion. It's like you won't know what's going on in the show, so it doesn't. Yeah, it's weird booking. Yeah, that was my thoughts on two point zero. So uh, obviously, we're going to be extremely busy with next week's show. Uh, so there won't be an NXT two point zero segment on on the show, we'll briefly cover it if you guys want us to but going forward after Mania I, I'll take on the note taking duties for NXT 2.0 for us if there's demand for it there'll always be demand I think at this point I need to mention because I think we mentioned in uh, the FBL, not the FBL, the WS. WCP chat that we need to mention a certain person at this point to make someone happy. Oh, remember? yeah. Uh, what was her name? Uh... Natsu Poi. I oh, think yeah. she's called, I think they call her Poi. I think she he knows her, she knows her the Poi. But yeah, Natsu Poi, I think they're on about. Tiny Joshi. Joshi yeah. Natsu Poi, she's good. Um, I do follow the, uh, the, the Joshi wrestling. She is one of the best. To be fair, the Joshi wrestling is on another level. Um, which will go on my rating soon, but yeah, um, we'll move on to AEW anyway. Uh, but yeah, there's your mention. So you're listening this week, aren't you? <laughs> <laughs> that's how you get views. <laughs> yeah, so uh, that one listener for life. <laughs> <laughs> oh, I wish I had my camera now. It's that uh, that meme where you just point to your school going smart. <laughs> <laughs> Um, but yeah, so March 23rd, AEW, um, last night. I always forget that it's just last night. Um, I want still... He's never really doing a bad show. Like, I would say this is this week was an average show for them. Like It wasn't like off the charts. Like, yeah. There were some good things. Like My favourite match of the night was the first match. I don't know if that was what you were going to allude to or you, you were going with somewhere else. Well, CM Punk versus Dax Harwood was very good. Made Dax look uh, like a star here. Dax is a good singles wrestler. The the few matches he's had as a singles wrestler that I've seen, he's very good. Um, but yeah, and then CM Punk's just on another level at the moment. He's having the time of his life. Yeah, it was just good wrestling as well. There wasn't any kind of flashy crap going on like springboards or anything like that. It was just good chain wrestling. 
This was um, the match that was all about showing that Punk's finally knocked off the ring rust. Like he is like fully back in peak condition again. Yeah, it was good for Dax as well to look like because Punk's getting to that stage now where he's he's fully ready to go. To have someone like Dax hang with him, who's a tag wrestler, mm. just makes him look even better. But Dax has that on Anderson about him, don't I? Like Arn mm. Anderson was mainly in the tags, but he, he could hold his own and had a lot of single styles. Um, but yeah, this is the hindrance for me. I, I don't know if you both watch the YouTube shows at all. Um, what, being the elite? No, the um, Dark and Elevation. Oh, no, I don't. I, no. I check the results, but I, I just don't have time. What, the ranking system? Like, you, If you don't pay attention to that, it seems so random suddenly. It was like uh, the Ass Boys. Um, just, they were there. I didn't understand why they were there <laughs> until the end of the match, and it made sense they're going to be challenging FTR as a tag team. But it was just, unless you know that they're winning on Dark and Dynamite, uh, Elevation, sorry, they were just there. Um, but yeah, it was a very good match. Um, the top rope suplex looked incredible. Yeah. Like that just perfect. Everything about it. The yeah. headbutt nail fall as well. About, I love when wrestlers. I get, I can understand why they don't do it. Obviously, we all heard like the the headbutt, how how much injury it can cause, but it looks good when it happens. And crucially, there was not a single bit of cheating or interference. Like it was clean as a whistle from both guys. And, yeah, Cash let it go. Yeah, and there was more allusions to their new manager being Bret Hart with him busting out this the sharpshooter. Yeah, that it was happened. A nice the... looking sharpshooter. Yeah, like he went for it twice. The first time he didn't get it on, and the second time he was very... He's just a good wrestler. Um, small package near finish. Um, where Dak nearly beat Punk, and then the brilliant chain kind of into the Anaconda voice. And then Dax, obviously, he, he had to give. Um, but I rated that three stars. Like, it was just below uh, the stars Rollins match for me, but, like, it was still a very good match. Yeah, as I was saying earlier, I put it just above that, but they're definitely my two favourite matches of the week. Yeah, I, I put it just under. Um, I did prefer Rollins and AJ. Good. Anyway, uh, <laughs> <laughs> to be fair, I was just going to go on cage matches as well, because I thought there were, there's always someone that shits on anything, but um, to be fair, someone's written a 5 out of 10, that was the lowest rating, which is still probably a low rating for this match. Um, which was Gammon Bozier. This was definitely a match that happened. The crowd loved Punk. Arwood did a diving headbutt twice. That was the review of his match. <laughs> okay. <I loved> it. <laughs> okay, yeah. <laughs> it definitely yeah. sounded Gammon. <laughs> <laughs> um, yeah, so then that followed up with uh, the Jericho Appreciation Society, which I'm getting behind more and more. Every time they're in the it's just full on ego. I've noticed in AEW, every heel chews gun like their jaw's going to fall off. Three point, <laughs> the 2.0 guys did were, you watch, were doing that, yeah. Yeah, did you watch Danny Magic throughout that? Like, his jaw was swinging. It's because he's got <laughs> that bit in here. I don't know if you watch BT uh, as well. He does that thing. He's over enthusiastic at everything. Like, do you want a taste? But he does that finger movements. He's brilliant. Mm. Like that whole promo was good. It was just a bit of ego build. There was some comedy bits with them looking behind the curtains going, not there. You know, it's just... That like, was fun. Jericho heel is the best Jericho, and that kind of smarmy Jericho is the best heel. Like face heel at year and a half of ruining MJF's life. I don't want to see again that kind of... Whereas heel Jericho is perfect. I think uh, Jericho always gets it right when he reinvents anything. And then it's good for about six months, and then you just get tired of it. And I always think that's a theme with Chris Jericho. It's because he does the same thing. He doesn't when he reinvents it. He realizes it gets over, and then he just leaves it. Yeah, fester. Um, but yes, yeah, so it was just a full-on ego promo, um, and then that was followed up by the clusterfuck match of Hardy's Sting and Darby versus Andrade Family Office. Or is it Hardy? Family I hope we Office never have to see this ever again. This could have been so week. much better. Like the biggest fault with this, and I don't know if you agree with this or not, was the pro- the production of the match. Whoever produced it needs shot. 
because the cameras were cutting constantly to nothing happening. Yeah, no, it was an absolute mess. Have oh, they hired what? Kevin Dunn? Kevin Dunn would have been, done a better job of keeping up with the action <laughs> on that. Like, literally, oh. they kept cutting to people just looking around. Like, when nothing was happening, and they left. Matt is the only one out there, right, for the face side, for the crowd. So, which is uh, probably, yeah. Which is why you never got much reaction from the crowd as stuff was happening. Obviously, that was yeah. kind of hidden by television cameras. But I'm sure if yeah. you were in attendance, you were just watching Private Party beat up Matt Hardy. Yeah. It was just a good spot. It, it was a cluster football. It, it, it wasn't terrible. I could really, I'd like there was some good spots in it. Like the Swanton bomb was just to get Jerry Jeff Hardy over as the the Swanton. It was a good Swanton bomb as well. It wasn't like yeah. And Butcher bad. eating Darby Island down the stairs was a good spot. Oh yeah, I forgot about that. The um, power bomb smash, smash, eating. Yeah. Um, Sting. The fans love Sting no matter what he does now. Look, Sting a slash diving no up it. Everyone loved him. No jumpy. <laughs> God damn it. Um. I still look, look, and then obviously the finish was a bit shit because Sting, old man Sting, couldn't hold that guy. Yeah. <laughs> he just kept that, doing it. And he kept that's doing what I was it. talking about with the nearly botching. <laughs> <Right. laughs> it was just like he'd watch it in the corner. He's picking up, he's getting, he's got, no, he's gone down. He's up, no, no, oh. I can't wait till Botchamania for it anyway cause, to see what the, whether it'll be Benny Hill music or some other big thing over the top of that. It's got to yeah, be Benny Hill. Overall, like, I didn't hate the match. Like, it was a clusterfuck, but I knew it was going to be a clusterfuck. That, it's what it is. Like, I rated two and a half, which probably is a bit high. Thinking of it, like... It was decent, but it was so poorly produced. It would have been much better if the spots were planned out so that it was smooth transitions instead of the camera cutting over going, are they doing anything yet? Oh, no, they're not doing anything yet. Cut back. Oh, wait, they're not doing anything either. What do we do? I just don't yeah. see Jeff Hardy diving off stuff into people and tables, and I don't I don't want to see it anymore. But that's what he is. That's all he, needs to, he needs to stop being that. Is Sting going to do that? Thing is, yes, he is, clearly. What's going to happen is you're going to have uh, Hardy, uh, Jeff Hardy and Darby Allen try to win up each other for the next few months. Yeah. And then one of them will end up dead. <laughs> it's ridiculous. I don't know. If Jeff Hardy might half die and he'll come back with some half paint on his face. And then they'll become <laughs> Allen and Hardy. Of course, it'll be the other half, it won't be the same half. <laughs> and then they'll Standing do that camera. Side side yeah. Too. They'll do that camera thing where they'll morph into one. I'm excited. You've heard it here first. Um, <laughs> but yeah, so uh, Benny Royley, or Benny Roy, um, rated it a 2 out of 10. A majority of the matches, a 63-year-old Sting has featured in during his career so far in AEW have been dangerous tornado tags. Tony Khan has an obsession with these style of matches and they're becoming monotonous to watch, which is surprising given how chaotic they are. It's perplexing why they can't just book him in a normal eight tag tag because they saw the match last week and saw how slow the hardies were yeah so that's why they needed a clusterfuck i think to get him in the kind of uh mood um but then yeah so following that uh you had the ft ftr and the ass boys leading to the it's going to be a feud now that match is happening next week as well isn't it so it's not going to be a feud it's just going to happen they're going to lose and that'll be it yeah yeah um, and then you had Moxley and Danielson versus the Varsity Blondes, which was just an ultimate squash match, which I was surprised by because they gave Taylor and Uter a lot more time last week. Because, this was just a beatdown. Yeah, I'm surprised they didn't give more shine to Pillman Jr. I can understand yeah. why they wouldn't have given much to Griff because he's the he's not the... I don't want to say he's Marty Jannetty. The whole Marty Jannetty, Shawn Michaels things not really applicable to most tag teams anymore, but it's certainly the less charismatic and the, the lesser name value of the two. Uh, yeah. But yeah, they didn't give them anywhere near as much as they gave uh, Utah and uh, 
Taylor last week. Yeah, and it was just um, like there was a bit of they got a bit of time to get in attacks on Moxie and stuff, and then they just snuffed them out and beat them. That was pretty much it. Um, I read that two and a quarter. It was just it is what it is. Julia Hart was weird in that. Uh, they just mentioned her once that she isn't looking at the match. She was sitting on the stairs, but then did you notice she was there for the whole of the Moxie promo and the, as well? Mm-hmm. Yeah, she didn't. Yeah, just. So didn't even mention it, and then obviously I was hoping she'd be there for the rest of the night and just never mentioned, but now she was gone. Uh, obviously, they've got their, whether this is the official name or not, I really love the name uh, Blackpool Combat Club. Yeah, it's very, it's, oh, it's gr- got to be official, isn't it? Yeah. yeah, it's a great name, that. Uh, and I like the way they're doing it. See what I said last week about uh, we were, it's not just going to start tagging with them on. Uh, yeah. Rampage, they're doing it the right way. We're like saying, "Oh, you need to join the hard way." So, right. Obviously, I don't know if, if it's the bit coming up or we've missed it. Where uh, they're backstage, and uh, Trent and we are you are kind of having a back and forth. Uh, yeah, that's just coming up. Yeah. Um... It was to MGF and Spears first, on not it? Yeah, so it's just after that, yeah. So the MGF promo, uh, basically that whole promo was him saying that Wardlow owes him everything. Little piggy. Um, yeah, piggy. Jesus. Um, the, my favourite line, the Jesus fucking line. Jeez. I'm saying Jesus about the Jesus line. I'll put him on a cross. You know, a good grov. Um, and obviously Wardlow had enough. You get stopped by the mass of security, which they made that look good as why well. it was. It was a few security, and then it was like literally like it reminded me. Do you remember the Dark Order's thrown people where there's just mounds of them? Yeah. That's real what you were holding back, Wardlow. <laughs> um, and then we finally got the answer of uh, is he still under contract with MJF? Which he is. He's being paid to stay at home, which just it, MJF's a dick. A uh, 90 day no compete, or perhaps even a CM Punk, yeah, after the walkout of the like, like purposely keeping him under contract so he doesn't go anywhere. I'm hoping they do uh, something smart and they don't just put him back on TV in a couple of weeks. They should do it as in, like, you forget him for a few weeks, a month or so, and then kind of not just every week he's there, yeah. But they need to sell that part of it somewhat until. I don't know whether it's House of Back or something later down the line, bring him in, or mm. I don't know. Hey, uh, wait, I'm just chucking faction name out, right? Obviously, we're the Andrade family office. No, yeah, there's an alliance there with MGF and Andrade, so it wouldn't be Andrade that does it. Uh, obviously, he paid off Andrade. He, Get used to these guys for interference a while back. Yeah, so the, it's just overall, we, uh, it was a good spot, a good segment. Um, MJF's always good on the mic. Anything he does, he's perfect at the moment. I mean, he just gets over their feud a bit more. Um, and then we went to the Utah bit, which we were mentioning now, which basically uh, covers the elements of uh, the best runs in Utah. Yeah, and it was a brilliant line that Utah came out with. Uh, when Trent was like, oh, I never really liked you. He was like, well, I never really liked you either. And quite frankly, I'm not trying to be the best friend I can be. I'm trying to be the best wrestler I can be. So, again, I think that's helping build to eventually, like, Jericho's sports entertainment is going to be going against Regal's pro wrestlers. Yeah. I think that's the eventual end game. It will Makes be good sense. as well. Um, but yeah, it's good as well because they're doing stuff with the best friends. That are just... that will be a good lot like, of Utah leaving and stuff. It'll just be a good match. Veretta. Because Utah's a very good wrestler. Look, he had a match with Daniel Garcia at um, I think it's I Wrestling TV or something like that. Independent Wrestling TV, which was like an hour draw and it was fantastic. Mm-hmm. Um, but yeah, um, moving on, it was a uh, Cole versus Lethal, the uh, Ring of Honor, Ring of Honor Dream match. Um, it was building to be a good contest, and then it just went a bit sh- crap for me. I don't know if you felt both felt the same. Yeah, ended up following Adam Cole's usual like, 
DQ, like dirty, no DQ, but dirty finish of Red Dragon interference, low blow. Yeah. Like it's I... kind of by the numbers now. He's kind of heel finishes. What's worse as well, he's trying to make himself look out like he's going to be, he, he deserves to have another shot at age and like, you know, he, he's, whatever he said, lightning in a bottle and stuff like that, but he's barely beating these people. Yeah, but he's a heel, mate. Like, I know he don't necessarily like a monster going after uh, Paige at the moment. But if you're gonna have him as a kind of believable challenger, you need someone who's like kind of wily and getting wins any way they can. Mm. But the the feud should have been over at Revolution, in my opinion. Hey, it was a it was a clean win as well. It was just to beat him. There was no luck shenanigans. You just beat him. Um, Cole steals the title at the end. That's pretty much what I remember. Uh, Road Dog um, put a tweet out. Did you see that? I don't know if you follow uh, follow Road Dog BG James. Uh, I, no, I don't. I don't actively follow him because he's got some pretty disgusting views. Outrageous but, views. Uh, but I've not seen it. No. Yeah, he came up on my feed. Um, he basically said, "I don't know. Okay, I don't know what you think as a friend, but I I don't want you to come out with your like pick up your title as you come in to save me." <laughs> like, which is definitely right. He's like he's gone, picked up his title, and then ran down to the ring with his title. Save his mate. I like to think that Hank, uh, Hank Man's always kind of walking around with his tail around his waist. I bet if you were to have a camera cut to Hang Man right now, he'd be sitting wearing his title. With a whiskey. With a whiskey. Nothing else on. <laughs> and a cowboy hat. Yeah. <laughs> um, but yes, yeah, so I rate that two and a half. It was, it was good. It was just not get. It just got stopped. Momentum. Lethal's being buried. Like, there's nothing else to say to it. Lethal's like the top star of Ring of Honor and he's not won a match. No. Unless he's on it's, the it's dark. A, it's a waste. Looking at his record, I think it was that they, they had him as number five in the company, so he must be getting woods of win on dark and dark elevation. Obviously, barely anyone watches that. Yeah, so he, he's beaten... I'll give you the last three people he's beat. He's beat uh, Merrick Donovan. Mm-hmm. Pentico and JD Drake and Jura Joel, and that was number five in the rankings. Yeah, I've good solid of, wins. I've heard of two of them. Yeah. Oh, and he beat Baron. Oh, no, that was a deal. That was an independent, so forget that one. Um, and then he lost to Ricky Starks on TV before that, so. Good uh... booking. Yeah. Um, but yeah, so I rated that two and a half. It, like, it was building to be a good match. Jay Lethal will have good matches. He's just. I'm starting to care less and less for him because he's not winning from what I'm seeing. See, to be fair, Ring of Honor was the only one that booked him as a, a credible threat. Everywhere else could have booked him as a, either a comedy jobber or mid carter. Okay, you know, but just, yeah, like thinking about it. I was trying to prove you wrong, but I can't. I, yeah. <laughs> I was just going to break out into Black Machismo then, but I'm just going to leave that. Um, but yeah, so I rated that a uh, two and a half. Um, Vel wrote, wow, so bad and useless, which that's that's strong straight away, isn't it? Um, there's not a single moment in this match where Cole looks strong. Lethal dominated 70% of the match, and Cole only seed when Jay was distracted. Red Dragon helped Cole something like three times. Yes, and he forms on dark, yeah, he performs on dark and lost the FWU championship. Um, this is the bottom of the mid card. Still, Cole couldn't do anything on his own. The crowd was silent. I don't understand why. I can't wait for Page feud with Punk to start. That won't be for a while. I don't see Page having the feud with Punk. I don't... Uh, the title will be on a heel by the time Punk goes for it. Not unless you have a um, Punk heel turn, which I, I think it's still far too soon for that. The, <laughs> the crowd wouldn't boo him yet. Not a chance. Yeah. Um, but yeah, so as I said, that's kind of stopped the momentum of the match. Then we moved on to Caveira and Conti. Like, d- this is going to be a breaking, strong opinion right now. Yeah, Karen? Breaking news. Did you guys know they were dating? Like, what? Absolutely no mention of it in their social media. They don't bring it up every five minutes and completely unrelated posts. Absolute news to me. had no idea. 
I felt like should... that deserved the uh, news jingle there. Yeah. Uh, the, 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 the news. Breaking <laughs> news. It may, have been, uh... it may have been news to practically no one. <laughs> Said, uh, I was, I was completely up. sarcastic when I said that. <laughs> I, I, my opinion feels less controversial now. I was about to bring out an opinion, but you kind of... Uh, at the moment, I dislike Guevara so much. <laughs> just so... It, everything he does is winding me up, and not in like a heel way, as in I just want you to go away. Yeah, same. To be fair, I'm not a fan of him. I like Conti. I like Conti. It's just everything is about... I don't care. It's like, I think what they realised is because everyone thought with the old Twitter thing where they thought they broke up that marriage or their engagement, and they're thinking, you know what, we can use this on TV. It's like, I don't care. I feel bad for Pam, because whether that was amicable spot or not, yeah. like, to have that get everywhere, it just seems a bit unfair to her. Yeah, and everything he does at the moment, like he keeps doing that thing. I don't like. I have triggers at the moment. Like he does that thing where he does, I'm crazy, and then does the sewing. It's like I don't care, Salmon. <laughs> I don't care. But yeah, so at the moment, yeah, Guevara. I used to love good. Like he still has good matches. I'm not saying his matches are bad. It's just him as a person, as like character at the moment, winds me up. I don't think that's what they're supposed to be getting across. I don't know if they're trying no. to get you wound up. Yeah, I was going to oh, say yeah. I don't think he's meant to be winding up the fans, is he? So. Yeah, and then it just continued. Everything about this segment was horrific. I wrote it. It's just Dan Lambert. I kind of liked him at the start, but now I don't care because the Jericho feud ruined him. It just didn't make him any more credible. Like they're just, it's bad. The other page turned up, Ethan Page. Um, he just turned up and he was there. It was, oh, it's bad. I don't know if you, you guys get any positive opinions about this whole thing. No, project. but just for anyone that didn't watch, uh, there was a picture tweeted out uh, akin to the Shawn Michaels picture for Playgirl of old, but it's both him, uh, both Sammy and T from when he was TNT champion wearing nothing but the belt. Obviously, uh, Lambert calls himself the the best TNT co champion of all time. Kisses the belt, and that's when Sammy says, "If you know what we've done with that belt, uh, then not only what was the line again? Move. Do you remember the line? It was something like, "You wouldn't be kissing it or something." I think. Yeah, I think it was. Or is it you've you've really taken having that belt to heart now? You're taking to having it in your mouth. That's the one. Uh, oh, it was disgusting anyway. Yeah, it was well, good. Yeah, I just tried to uh, look it up, but I just, I've seen the pitch, but like the actual quote. But yeah, it's, the old segment was. Uh, it just started with Guevara and it ended in my mind. Um, but yeah, so at the moment, yeah, I just said, look, Guevara and Matt Twice, and like previously, I enjoyed him. He's just getting too much now, and I just don't care enough. And he's it's getting thrown in your face that they're in a relationship. Yeah, uh, they're in what? Sorry, they're in an amical relationship, right? Fair enough. Is that, is that more breaking news there? Yeah, I don't think anyone knew that. We might need to add a spoiler warning to that. <laughs> Uh, but yeah, so moving on. Uh, <laughs> Layla Hirsch versus Red Velvet. I'm massive on Layla Hirsch at the moment. Like, what I heel turn. me through this match was the constant code of low centre of gravity. Like, commentators use that to indicate small and like big. Like, small he used to do that with Taz as well, didn't they? Taz used to get that a lot in ECW when he was doing suplexes. He's got a low salt centre of gravity. Yeah, it's just code for bitchy comments about fat shaming, in my opinion. <laughs> but yeah, so yeah, yeah I, Hirsch as a wrestler, I really enjoy this hill turn at the moment. Yeah, it's fucking um, good for her. Her suplexes are really good as well. Like, I'm just, I'm a bit I'm really hard on it. Like, the match wasn't great, I'll be honest, but like, the, her parts in it were good. Um, she was a proper dirty hill. You had the dirty hill move at the end, which I did enjoy the um, the old switcheroo with the uh, foreign objects. 
Now I'm going to shove this big. Oh, I'm trying to word this without this sounding dodgy. Now I nearly made that sound really dodgy. Um, wrenching the. Top Are you talking and, about uh, pulling a rod out? I nearly said shoving the big wrench in a top. That's what. I, you know. <laughs> <laughs> um, yeah, so she had a wrench in her back pocket. I'm going to say it that way. Oh, I can't. I'm... She had a foreign object in her back pocket. That's good. That's... Wow. <laughs> Um, and then the ref caught her with the other foreign object, so she used the second, the first foreign object to win the match. Boy, it was a weird finish though, because she hit her in the arm but pinned her. But you know, I'll... red velvet's made is. the glass, so it makes sense. <laughs> Real velvet has that Sasha Banks esque that she may die from a dive. Oh, Sasha Banks used to do that thing where she did like a dive and she was landing on her face. Red Velvet follows that along, but yeah, it was it was a roll. Um, I rated two and a quarter. Um, badass Statlander came down, which I'm I'm glad that they're actually making Statlander look good as well. Like they're actually building people again. Mm-hmm. That division needs it, um, as we were discussing previously. Um, not on the air, but um, it does need it. Um, so I rated two and a quarter. Um, obviously, people will pan on a women's match because Cage Match loves it. I'm going to go with Tyson the Man. Hot mash on national TV. Some spots were sloppy as fuck. Boring. I didn't care. It, it did drag on for too long. Only six minutes long. He's a man of the um, TV era. And then um, we had a Thunder Rosa pro- promo. We were just getting over a total win. And then the match we're all looking forward to. The the new, the new challenger, Nyla Rose. No, no, no. Nyla Rose. I just... They've buried her so much, but then they bring her back out as the big challenger again. It's like she. As soon as Guerrero was out there, I was like, oh, it's happening. And it's just, I don't want it. Now, if you take a step back and look at the show as a whole, they squeezed every single women segment of the show into 15 minutes. Like, literally, all they had was the, the interview segment and the Wayla Hirsch match. Squeezed it into one fifteen minute period, so it's not be shorter than that, yeah. So it, and the whole purpose of that was so it only affected one like quarter hour of the show demographic wise. So any yeah. viewer loss was concentrated to one quarter of the show, which is a really cynical move, and it's not going to improve the women's division if that's the the tactic they're going to take. It's just going to double down on them shitting on the women, basically. Also, then just going, you know what we're going to do? We're going to bring Nala Rose out as your next challenger. It's just like, he hasn't built, the Nala Rose hasn't been built back up yet to be a challenger. She's done nothing. No, we anyway. know she's going to lose again. Okay. I think that was the first time I've seen Nala Rose in Dynamite in over a month. Have a look, um, I don't know, okay, match. I'm just going to see because they load the matches for you as well. Um, but while I'm loading that, um, yeah, so that was another challenger match, and then we had uh, the main event, which was the Jericho and uh, Jericho, Jericho Appreciation Society versus the Dark Order team of Alex Reynolds and John Silver. Johnny Youngie. Um, Johnny Youngie. Well, that was a very average main event. I, I yeah, like I can believe fact, this was the main event. I do like the fact that they gave Garcia the win and not Jericho. Yeah, that is good. Um, <laughs> but there was some back and forth, like Johnny Youngie and um, Alex Reynolds' his double team moves are very good. They're very slick. Um, I don't know if you've got the same opinion as I do, but they've buried Audrey Edwards recently as a ref. Like, when she first was refereeing in AEW, they made her proper look strong. Like the rules were never being broken. Everything she was like in control. She's in the last few months. She everything shenanigans are happening. She doesn't know what the fuck to do. Yeah, and it's just like I AEW think, rule. I think that Jim Ross tried to uh, push that narrative as well. And in fairness to him, uh, Tony came out and said. Uh, you know yourself how hard a job that is. You did. It. You were a referee, and Jr. was like, "Oh, yeah, you're right. I, I have been in that position myself." Yeah, it's just. I don't think there's a strong referee in AEW. They all get shot on. Yeah, I, I so did WWE referees. To be fair, uh, but. WWE commentators aren't calling out how dumb the ref is for missing it. Yeah, 
Yeah, and it's because I think it's because with AEW you have all the matches, like the tag matches, where there's like, just everyone's in the ring for half the match. Like, there's weapons well, thrown around everywhere. With the tag rules, were they not supposed to be different right from the start? Like a, a, they did, I don't even think they yeah. knew at the start. I said yeah, I think they said it was, yeah. was going to be like a 10 count for your partner and uh, get out of the ring and not a 5. A 20 count for uh, count outs. Yeah. But they've never no, actually not following it. discussed that openly. They just don't yeah, I know there were certain teams, I think it was Phoenix and Pentagon, were trying to do it properly and everyone else wasn't holding tag ropes and it just made all the matches look dumb. Yeah, so it's just, um, yeah, that was a thing I noticed the match. I did like the spot with the Jericho, the step spot, where he kicked the steps and fell over that. That's a different kind of thing, cheating hill thing, because obviously you've got normally the bout throw and then throw it to the hands and then fall on the floor. That was kind of a different, I'll just kick the steps and then fall over, and then the other guys will say that he threw me on the steps. Um, but yeah, so as you said, yeah, Garcia got the win. Um, very average main event. Um, I rated it two and a half. Just a very average match. Yeah. About ten minutes for a main event. It just didn't seem right. Weird placed match as well. Like that match, I'd rather have either like the same Punk, I would match, or even well, the Adam Cole, Jay Lethal to end it, and then have the old Cole steals the title at the end. Yeah, I mean, for me, Dynamite the first hour was great, and then the second hour dipped. Yeah, it's a weird, weird way. I don't know. Yeah, it's. Are you saying yeah, it dipped? Um, they'll, they'll rescue it next week. They always seem to do this. They'll have a bad show, and then the next week will be a banger. To be fair, this wasn't a bad show. It was just average. Oh, it? Look, but yeah. it's bad for it. Like, I'd say it's not good for AEW if that's going to. But AEW does good shows. Yeah, but, yeah. yeah. I was going to say because they don't tend to do like really bad shows. So when I say bad show, it's by AEW standards. So uh, a bad AEW yeah. show is an average WWE show. Yeah, the Paul 04, we, um, the cage match guy, he literally summarised it the best. Man, I don't know why this was the main event. It was fine, but still an okay match, but not a main event, whatever. Pretty much the hit the nail on the head there. Yeah. And that's the end of the reviews. Did it? Yeah. So, really, all it's left for us to do is just thank you all again for listening. Again, if you could love it, give us a little. Like, comment, subscribe, interact with us either in the comments on Twitter. Uh, our socials are in the sidebar, as you can see. They'll also be down in the description. Uh, we've got a big, big week coming up. Uh, not this week, but next with WrestleMania coming up. Uh, potential special guests. I'm not going to promise anything just now. It all depends on availability. But you won't have to just look at the three of us. Uh, who knows, you might even get some bonus episodes uh, but yeah all that's left to do is just thank you all very much and on behalf of Ray and Smooth thanks and see you next week see you guys see you all bye